Hallelujah. Well, good morning. Welcome to the Ridge Church Sunday morning live service. We're glad you're here with us in person or joining us via live stream. There goes a head. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Man, I, man, I'm just so charged up for, for the Lord today. I'm so charged up for him. We're going to take communion this morning. And, and I think we're going to be doing communion a lot more. You know, when, when, when COVID first hit and they, you know, they, they said you can't meet in person and I just kept coming here and left the doors open and anybody who wanted to come in could come in. And we would just take communion. We took communion live online and we took it here in person. And you know, they're, 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 trying, they're trying to put fear into us again. Uh, fear is the weapon of hell. Yes. That, that, that's, that's all they've got, fear. fear. Fear of death, fear of dying, fear of sickness, fear of having, fear of not having. Come on, fear. That's all they've got. What do we got? We have faith. Faith overrides everything. I love that song by C.C. Wine, and I believe for it. Come on, man. I believe for it. I believe that I will see the righteous provided for and the righteous not forsaken in the land of the living. I would have been, I would have been miserable if I had not known that God provides for the righteous in the land of the living. Amen. Amen. So we're going to look at this. Isaiah 53. And I'm, going to, I'm just going to read this to you. And this is, this is in, 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 in Judaism, this is the forbidden chapter. They're not allowed to read this because they don't understand it. You know, Paul writes and he says, there's a veil over their eyes until they believe. Right? Then there's this veil. Okay, so there, there's a veil, but we, we believe so the veil's not over our eyes, is it? Right. right? He is despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief, and we, and, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. See, what we've talked about. We've talked about this, right? We harden our hearts when we hide from him. Okay? A person who says, I just can't believe, that, that's not the truth. They can, they've just chosen not to. Okay? Uh, he was despised, and we did not esteem him. Surely he has borne our griefs. That means that, that he, he, he bore our pains, and he carried our sorrows. That, that literally means sickness. Yet we esteemed him stricken and smitten of God, and afflicted, uh, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was what? He was wounded. He was pierced through for our transgressions. He was bruised. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. In 1 Peter 2.24, and I, I love this, there, there was the old um, uh, faith creation. It was the first incarnation of, of the Rama singers and band. And, and they had this song. My mom listened to it all the time. She was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and she got healed from it. Come on. She listened to this song all the time. 1 Peter 2.24 says, I were. See, here in Isaiah 53, it's looking forward. By his stripes, we are healed. But 1 Peter, Peter writes under the influence of the Holy Spirit. He says, by his stripes, we were healed. Okay? Were is past tense. Jesus healed you. Jesus healed us. It's just up to us. We've just got to believe it and receive it. That's why Paul says... He says, many of you take the, the Lord's Supper incorrectly. You're not believing. See, we've got to believe for it. We have to believe. Jesus said, he said, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Amen. Come on. If it works for salvation, that's all it took, right? Yes. If I believe in my heart, I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord, I shall be saved. Then I'm saved, right? Right? Yes. So let's not make it too complicated for everything else. Amen? Father, we just come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Jesus, your body was broken for us, for our sin, to redeem us from sickness, disease, and death, and the curse. So we received this, this wafer this morning. This is a type of your body. We receive it for health and wholeness in our bodies in Jesus' name. Take and eat. Hallelujah. Paul in, in Corinthians, he writes, and in the same manner, he took the cup and saying, this is my blood.
the blood of the new covenant, the covenant that I make with you, to redeem you from sin and death. And he said, take it, drink it as often as you remember me. So we're remembering you, we're remembering what you did. You died for us. You died spiritually, went to hell for us, separated from God. You died physically, separated from your body for our health. And so we receive it all now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, that ought to make someone happy. Amen. Come on, I know it makes me happy. Yeah. You know, they've, they've got this, this new thing now. They've got this monkey pox thing. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm not a monkey and I'm not getting it. I didn't descend from monkeys and I'm not going to get it. I'm made in the glorious, wonderful image and likeness of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You, Christians... Children of God ought to have some joy. Come on. We, we, ought to be, we ought to be when the rest of the world is down and depressed about everything that's going on in the world and it's all down and depressed and it's in fear and it's, it's, it's ramping up for another, another pandemic and it's doing all this other stuff. I, I'm not. No. I'm ramping up for more Jesus. Amen. Yeah. You know, turn, turn, turn over here to uh, Ephesians chapter 5 real quick. It's, it's not part of my message this morning, but it's part of what I believe the Lord wants you to see. Ephesians chapter 5, and in verse 25 it starts, it says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify or set her apart and cleanse her with the washing of the water by the word. That he, the reason for that, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. Come on. Jesus wants a glorious church. What does a glorious church look like? Not having any spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she should be holy and without blemish. Amen. Sickness and disease are blemish. They're wrinkles. They're spots. Jesus, Jesus wants for us to be a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such blemish. And he has prepared the way for that for us. Amen? Amen. See, by the washing of the water of the word. How are we going to get without spot or blemish? Through the word. What we've been talking about all the time, man, I'm telling you. God wants us to get the word. God wants us to be led by the word, to to, to plant the word in our hearts, to water ourselves with that same word. What does that do? It just builds you up in your faith. It builds you up in your expectation that God has something better for you. See, we don't have to, we don't have to just get on the roller coaster and take the ride with the rest of the world. We can go in the opposite direction. Coming up here in the fall, you can go up to Taylor Creek over there, up by Lake Tahoe, and you can watch the salmon swim upstream. Where are they going? They're going home. They're going to the place that they were born. What are we ultimately going to do? We're going to go home. In the meantime, we need to be that, mind, that mindset headed direction. That our ultimate goal isn't here. I'm not subject to the things of the world. I'm not subject to fear. I'm not subject to death. Listen, but Paul writes in the Old Testament, in the, in the, in the Old Testament, Paul didn't write. Paul writes, Paul writes and says, he says, these things are carnal, natural, fleshly, but you are spiritual. You've been born from above. God wants us to live from up here down this way, not here up. Do you, you know how I know that? Because he seated us together with God, with Christ in heavenly places. Far above all the principalities and powers and dominions and every name that is named. Come on, he wants us up here. Not down here. Yes. There was an old saying, you, you, you're so, so heavenly minded, you're no earthly good. That's right. Well, listen, if you want to be earthly good, you've got to be really heavenly minded. I know when Brother Hagen was, was, was sick and he was, he was a 17 year old boy and he was given up to die, they said, they said you've got to die. And the doctor came and, or a pastor came and visited him and was talking to him. He, he, says, he says, Well, don't you ever read Western novels or. Or, or anything else. He says, no, sir, I don't have time. I've got to read the Word. He says, you know, people go crazy that spend too much time in the Word. 
Well, count me in. I'm going to go crazy for Jesus. Come on. I, listen, come on. I want the word in me. I don't need the world in me. All you have to do to let the world in you is turn on the TV. Come on. Stay away from the news. It's the number one way to kill all disease. Well, I thought that was funny. Oh, don't want to do that very much. Okay, we are going to do as we have been doing. Heavenly Father, we come to you now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, that you give to us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. We thank you that the eyes of our understanding, our spiritual eyes, are enlightened and we know the hope and calling that you have for us. We thank you, Father, that we are walking in the fullness of all that you have for us. We are receiving by faith everything that you have, you have, you have given to us. We receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, oh, and Lord, we lift up, we lift up our, our leaders in this nation. Yes. Yeah. Father, we lift them up. We pray that they would not be influenced by principalities, powers, and dominions in the heavenly realm. We take authority over that in the name of Jesus. Yes. We thank you, Lord, that our leaders, we, we declare and decree that our leaders are godly who put you first. And we thank you, Father, that they do the most important thing next, which is to put Israel first. Jesus, you said that all nations would be judged how they treated Israel. So, Father, we lift up Israel. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that they should, they should dwell in safety. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, listen, you can find all that in the Bible. Amen? amen. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 4. Well, we spend a lot of time in Proverbs. Well, you don't like that? Let's start in Proverbs chapter 3 then. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3, verse 4 says, uh, well, we'll start in verse 3. Let, okay, well, we have to start in verse 1 then. <laughs> my son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my command. Listen, let your heart keep his commands. Now, we're not talking necessarily just about the Ten Commandments, but that's a really good place to start. Come on, if you'll put God first in everything and love others, you're, 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 you're going well, right? right? And he says in verse 2, he says, For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. I like length of days, long life, and peace being added to me. Don't you? Yes. Listen, the, the reason that Paul writes to, to Timothy and says, he says, Beloved, I, I pray above all else that you, you, would, you, would, you would pray for leaders and rulers and authorities. What is the purpose of that? That you might have a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness. Listen, the rest of the world can be experiencing a whole different scenario than you are. Because you're, you're, you're praying for your leaders. God's going to give you peace. You want peace? Pray for your leaders. You want peace? Keep the word of God. I mean, th these, are, these are guarantees that he's given to us right here. Well, but I don't believe that you can just go around saying that. Well, I'm not going around saying it. He is. I, I didn't write this. He did. Well, you can't say you believe all that. Well, I, yeah. Yeah, I can. And so should you. <laughs> we ought to be believing the word of God. Listen, this is the most important book that was ever written. These are the most important words that were ever given to anybody anywhere are the words that are written in this book. Every word of God is good. It's like medicine. Now pop over to my favorite chapter, chapter 4 and verse 20. My son, give attention to my words. Give attention. That means put down your phone. Come on. Put down your phone. Pay attention to my words. Put down your iPad. Turn off the TV. Right? Pay attention to my words. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Remember, we talked about this. That, that doesn't mean you've got to walk around with the word of God right here all the time because you'd get in car accidents. You'd never be able to go anywhere. You'd be stuck at home. With, what it means is always have it forth, first, first thought in your mind. When a situation happens, I, I like this. First, your first words, your first response to any situation is going to be the dictator of how you come through that situation. That's good. 
best to want to put the Word of God in there first. Right. Yes? Yes. Don't say, well, you know, so-and-so got it. I guess, you know, I talked to so-and-so yesterday. I guess I'm going to get it. No. We, 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 were, we were with, at, at Safeway, ran into some people that, that had just uh, tested positive for COVID, and they're wearing their masks, and we just stood there and talked to them. I'm not afraid. You, you get in big trouble when you're in fear. Job said, that which I greatly feared has come upon me. Well, I don't want to greatly fear anything except God, because I want him to come upon me and overtake me. Yeah. Amen? I like, I like that better. That's the best scenario. Your first words. So when, it, when a situation happens, if you haven't been reading the word of God, you don't know how God's going to respond to that situation. See, it's, it's super important. I read the Bible every day, and I listen to preaching every day, and the Lord told me you need to ramp it up some. Increase your intake. Come on, I'm going to increase my intake. I increase my intake. So we just need to increase our intake of the word of God. If we, don't, if, we don't, if we don't have an income, listen, if we don't have an income of something coming in, when the world comes at us, we're not going to have anything to come out. It's like I said last week. If you don't send something up to heaven, you're not going to get anything back down. We're not, we're, not, we're not sowing into that. We're not sowing the word into the situation. We're not sowing our trust into God. We're, we're, just, we're just parroting. I like called Kathy this morning and we were on our way and I was talking to her and Josiah's in the background repeating everything she says. What's he doing? He's parroting. He's just parroting what he hears. Listen, as, as, a, as a parent, you want your kids to parrot you in what you say about God. You, you want your children. Listen, it should be the desire of every believing man and woman who has children that your, chi your child or your children Go further in God than you went. Yes. Yes, thank you. That would be nice. Yes. We, we should want, our desire should be that our children go further with God and further in the plan of God. Yes. Okay? My, our kids have never known anything but faith. Right. They've never known anything but a Christian household. I know not everybody has that experience. But you all can start now. That's right. Parents, grandparents, yep. just be love, 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 love. Yes. Do not let them depart from before your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all your flesh. Uh, the one, one translation says that they're medicine. Mm -hmm. Okay? Your medicine. You go to the doctor, the doctor, excuse me, the doctor prescribes you medication, you take it, right? Well, Dr. God is telling you to keep the word of God in your heart and in your mind and before your eyes, and it's medicine to all your flesh. If you keep my commandments, Proverbs chapter 3, they will be long life and length of days and peace to you. Amen. Oh, the word of God is so important. It is so important that we keep the word of God right before us all the time in every situation. We say, well, what does God think about this situation? What does God think about inflation? God thinks it doesn't affect him. He paves streets with gold. Why should you worry about it? The, full, the, earth, the, earth is, the, the fullness of the earth belongs to God. Everything. Can God not work things on your behalf that if the world is going through a problem, you don't have to suffer with them? Listen. When the children of Israel were fleeing the land, of Egypt. Do you know what God did? He caused the, the Egyptians to give them gold and silver and fine linen, jewelry and clothes, Gucci, Yves Saint Laurent, Vera Wang, Jimmy Choo's. Come on, listen. This is what we're talking about. The Egyptians were the wealthiest nation of the time. Where do you think that, that all that all of the building materials and the gold. Remember, they, they threw the gold. Moses is up on, the, up on the mountain. And he comes back down. They've got a gold calf. He said, well, we put the gold in the fire and the calf came out. What gold? They were slaves. They were slaves. 
Psalm says that when we, we came out, that the Egyptians gave us their wealth. The wealth of the Egyptians was with us. They, they just like, here, I don't, I don't want any more curses. I don't want any more plagues. I don't want any more frogs. I don't want any more death. Take this stuff and go. Come on. The world is going one way. We're going another the world is headed to a really dark tribulation time. Yes. We're headed to Jesus. Amen. Come on. I'm headed to Jesus. Amen. Well, what if Jesus doesn't return in your lifetime? Well, I'm still headed to Jesus. Amen. I mean, he could come today. He could come tomorrow. He could come in 100 years. But I think he's closer to today or tomorrow. Yeah. I want to be ready. Yes. I want to have the, the oil of fellowship that the five wise virgins have. Come on, I don't, I, don't want to be, I don't want to be sitting there and I've got my wick and I've got my lamp, but I've got no oil. You, you, can't, you can't buy the presence and the fellowship of God from someone else. You have to cultivate that yourself with the washing of the water of the word and spending time with the Lord, spending time in prayer, spending time with him, listening to him. I'm not talking spending eight hours a day. No. But I'm talking... All day, you can, you can spend a little bit of time with him here and a little bit of time with him there. And he might speak to you over here and say, I want you to go do this. You're like, okay, I'll go do that. You go do that. And may, may, something may or may not happen. What matters is you did it. That's right. You're listening. You're being obedient. You're doing the good you know you ought to do. Amen? Amen. Well, let's get into my message for today. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hebrews, Hebrews 12, 1. If, if you'll turn over there, Hebrews 12, 1. And this is, this is coming after the, the, great, the great hall of faith framework. In Hebrews chapter 11, we're talking about Abraham and faith and, and Noah and, and David and, and all these great, are, 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 are the forefathers of our faith and all the things that they did and accomplished by faith. And so we go on in verse 12, or chapter 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, having just talked about all of these good things and the promises that were, were, were promised and, and the promises that were received, and then some promises, they, they, they continued to believe the promise but didn't have them. But therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with race the uh, with let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. What does this mean? This means that all of heaven, everybody that's gone on before you, your, your grandma, your grandpa, your dad, your mom, anyone who was in Christ when they, when they left this body, when they left this world, they're all up there. They're up there with Abraham. They're up there with Elijah. They're up there with Moses and Noah and Paul. And the apostles. And they're watching. And they're, 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 they're encouraging us from the other side. It's like you're at, a, you're at a football game. And your people are up in the stadium. And it, you're, you're up. And you, you've got the ball. And you're headed for the, for the goal. And they're all up there cheering you on. Heaven is cheering you on. Heaven is cheering us on right now. There's encouragement coming from heaven right now. It's not just Jesus. We're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. They're encouraging. Amen. They're, 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 they're praising God for you. I'm praising God for you. You run with, running with endurance the race that's set before us. Wow, is it really that time? Psalm 103, 20. Heaven is watching. 
Angels are watching. You know, angels are watching. Every person at their birth is assigned an angel. Jesus said their angel is ever before my eyes, ever before my face, ever before the face of the Father. Psalm 103.20 says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Well, that's great, Pastor, but it, it just says who, who excel at, at, at listening to his word. Well, whose word is this? That's God's word. What happens when you say God's word and you declare God's word over your life, over your body, over your situation, over your children, over your family, over your finances? His angels have something to do. Amen. When, you, when you say, beloved, I, I, I prosper and am in health even as my soul prospers. What is that doing? That's releasing angelic help. My angel's no longer just sitting in the back pew. Come on, check, check an Instagram. He's got something to do now. He says, oh, look, he said something I can line up with. He's speaking the word. And what is he going to do? He's going to excel at bringing it forth to come to, come to pass. We were on vacation, not really thinking about it, and Kathy was, Kathy was praying, and, and she, she came out, and she said, here, hold my hand. She said, the Lord just told me he secured our finances. So we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna just, we're going to hold hands on it, and we, did, we just held hands on it, and we prayed, and we received, we received that word. What does that do? That's a word from God concerning our finances. What does that mean? That means don't worry about my finances. Yeah. Why? Because he's got it under control. He secured it. Come on. I didn't need to have an extra word from God on that. It's great to get it, i got to tell you. Right? Yeah. But if, if he says that, I, that, that his desire is that we prosper, that just means to do well, to excel, to exceed right. in everything. Right. And be in health even as your soul prospers. Right. That doesn't mean, that doesn't mean uh, you know, Lamborghinis for everybody necessarily. What it means is you've got enough for everything you need and then you've got some left over. Right. You can help someone else. That's right. And you know what I'll tell you, the more you help someone else, the more God will give you so the more you can help someone else and the more you can have for yourself and the more you can help someone else. Right. Come on. God loves that. Why? Because God loves a cheerful giver. Right. Listen, if God loves a cheerful giver, what kind of giver do you think he is? A cheerful giver. Yes. God loves cheerful giving. Come on. It's fun to give. It's fun to give cars away. It's fun to give clothes away. It's fun to give, just give somebody money. Yeah. You can't just give somebody money if you don't have any money. Right? right. right? Yeah. Come on. It's fun. You can't, listen, I want to tell you this too. You can't outgive God. Right. Why do we keep talking about all this? Because, because this is big in my heart. And I see what's happening in the world. And we ought not be discouraged. That's right. We, we, ought to, we ought to be joyful and happy and expecting more and expecting increase and expecting health. And we should be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. You thought, Lord, you started this. You're going to finish it. Yes. You started this good work in me. You're going to finish it. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, you started, you started me down this road. You're going to finish it. Amen, amen, amen. And he's coming for those who love his appearing. Yes. I love his appearing. Yes. Come on. I want him to come right now. Yes. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yes. We're all just sitting here, and suddenly you, you hear it in, in the spirit. You hear the trumpet blow. And you think, it's Jesus, and he's coming. And you feel it. All of a sudden, boom, you're different, and you're out of here. You're, you're, you're caught up in the clouds with him. That's the kind of life of expectancy that every believer needs to have. God, God has something bigger for me. And listen, right now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to live the way that God... Let me, let me put it this way. The moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you stepped into eternity. Yes. You stepped into eternity. Yes. You, you, you stepped from death into life. You, you, you left the kingdom of darkness and entered the kingdom of God. Yes. There isn't anything that the kingdom of God has that you can't have now. Yes. It's just religion that tells you, no, no, that, those are all just spiritual things. And 
Well, Jesus said, anybody who gives up all this stuff for me in this lifetime, I'll give it back to them double in this lifetime. In this lifetime. If you've given up houses, if you've given up family, if you've given up jobs or friends, he's going to give it back to you in this lifetime and more. I didn't say that. He did. I'm just quoting him. I'm parroting Jesus. Hebrews 1.14 tells us that angels are his servants sent to help us. Lord, I need, I need X number of dollars by this day. I release my angels in Jesus' name. Listen, I've told you, we've done this multiple times. And every time we do this, it shows up. That thing that we, we've said, I, the, most, the most memorable, and I've shared this so many times, is that $250 contact lens when Faith was just two, and she popped it out. And those, those things, it was a semi-soft semi co uh, contact lens. And so after, after it would be out of, out of the eye for a little while, it would start to dry up and turn into this little taco thing. Right. And you had to be super careful with it. Yes. Okay? Because it, 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 it I, you know, I, I say taco because, you know, tacos. Um, <laughs> You're making us hungry. So I, we, we prayed and we released the angels to go and find it and bring it back. So a day goes by, a couple days goes by, I'm vacuuming the living room, and then a couple more days goes by, and I'm like, I'm walking through the living room, and right over here alongside the kitchen cabinets, because our, our kitchen was open to the living room, it was you know, one of those open concept kind of things, and I see something shiny on the carpet over there, and I walk over to it, it's that contact lens, and it's not dry. It's not dry. It's been days. That thing dries out in a couple of hours and folds up into a little taco. What happened? God sent his angels. Come on, Psalm 91. He gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Come on. Praise God. Heaven, heaven is waiting for us to do something. Heaven is waiting for us to say something so it can respond with the answer that we need. Yes. Ecclesiastes 8.4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Mm, Come on. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Well, but we're not kings, so yes, we are. Didn't you read where it says we are all priests and kings unto Amen. God? That's right. That Jesus is king of kings and lord of lords? Yes. Well, but I, I don't know about that. Well, okay, but it, God is king, is he not? And where his word is, there is power. Yes. Yeah. Does, it doesn't leave any room for except for you or you. Where the word of, the, of a king is, there is power. When we will put the word of God in our mouths and release it, Power is released. The greatest power that was ever released in any person's life was when they said, Jesus, I believe that you are Lord and I make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Change me. Take my life and do something with it. That is the, most, that is the release of power that translated you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light in the first place. Yes. Amen? Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come right now in Jesus' name. And I thank you that you are working all things together for our good. We thank you that you are, you are moving heaven and earth by your word in our mouths. I thank you, Father, that you're causing us to, to grow and to develop and to become the, the sons and daughters, the glorious church without spot or blemish or wrinkle or any such thing. And if you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, now's the time to do it. Don't wait. He could come any moment. All you have to do is just say this simple prayer with me. Pray along with me, everybody. Father, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I confess that I've been a sinner. But I receive your righteousness. In Jesus' name. Take my life and do something with it. Take my life and do something with it. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I, whether you're here or you're, you're watching online, that prayer is good for you no matter where you are. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. We got. We have. Yes. Um, we will not be having prayer or Bible study tomorrow uh, for the Fourth of July. Um, we've got plenty of food and stuff left over here. Yes. Um, we need to finish the last four chapters, and the next meeting for the women is going to be the last one for the summer. Okay. Will that be the following Sunday or Monday? Monday. Following okay. So not this Monday, but the following Monday at six thirty will be the final. The final. Uh, uh, <laughs> meeting uh, for uh, Change Your Words, Change Your World, or Change Your Life by Joyce Meyer. Uh, been an amazing book. We're going to start, I don't know if we'll start this week, maybe we'll start next week. We'll start doing gathering here live on Wednesday nights, and we'll pray, and we're going to, we'll, we'll do it live on, on Facebook, and do that Bible study. It's a great, it's a great book, man. It's a, it's a wonderful book. If you don't have it, um, I encourage you to get it, but we'll be, we'll be leading that here. Amen? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I love you guys so much. Yep. All right. You're dismissed. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye.